So in the jam areas, you're going to see on the screen, what you want to do to open these areas are turn C1 and C2, pull everything out to you. And this is the full paper path on the machine. Your main jam area will be here. This is the hot section. You want to be very careful here. Squeeze the handle and then use the roller to roll it out. Everything else is just opening with either an arrow or an arrow here or turns. And then the whole thing pushes back in. You'll put both pieces back into place. If not, the doors won't close properly. You have an A area here that just lowers and then these turn right out of the paper sources. If you're getting a lot of jams here, we want to go to the paper trays. We're going to open the tray, take the paper out, fan it really good and physically flip it over. That flip is going to control the curl. When loading paper, you want both of those trays, move that out of the way, you want to put the paper in, you want to be able to see the tips of those arrows, otherwise the paper may go behind the tray. When you close this tray, it's going to scoop that other paper source over. Once that happens, you can open and load that side again. So to load the other side, we're just going to move that out of the way and again load this side. Paper sources on the bottom, if you are using color paper or heavy bond, you do need to indicate with the paper settings. Otherwise, you have a lock and an unlock. The guides squeeze here and squeeze here. So that just moves back and forth. And, and the bottom one is the same. And one more location on the top here. Your feed area lifts up here. Underneath you have one area here that opens the whole feed unit. So paper clips, post-it notes, anything like that, you can get that out. Go ahead and give it a good push. On the cleaning, you have a handy dandy purple cleaning cloth. You want to wipe here and here. And that's if you're getting uh, lines on the paper. Usually it's paper dust or tone. For books, just push back on the feeder. That's going to give you a lift for books. If you put something heavy, it does that automatically. And then just lift it back up into place and close it back down. The main area for your finisher is going to be here. And this pulls completely out. This will be the main area you find jams, even though you've got a lot of blue guides here. Most of the time that's where I'm seeing, that's the last place it's gonna go to staple and do hole punch. For the hole punch, if it does tell you that it, the hole punch or empty waste punch, it's gonna give you that picture. You're just taking this out and emptying it. And that just goes right back into the place. screen anything that does happen uh, jam supplies anything that's needed should indicate on the screen here you have two different screens this would be your main screen you also have a simplified screen simplified is only giving you basics so you have sort staple and three hole punch you have your two-sided you also have your paper selection and reduction enlargement very basic so you want to get to the other features, you simply press Simplified Screen again. That gets you back to the main screen. Your paper settings, this is where you'll need to go to set heavy stock or colored paper. You're going to choose the tray that you want to select it to. I'm going to go back one. We're going to choose tray two or three. So in tray one, I would leave just the white paper. You're going to select Manual. This is going to give you what you can put through the system and the weight of the paper. The weight of the paper is very important because that will cause jamming. Also, when you're dealing with colored paper or heavier stocked paper, 
having it set out in out of the ream will also cause some jamming so if you have paper that's jamming in its color or weighted paper go a little deeper in the ream of paper and that should run a little bit better for you it's got a higher cotton content so it's going to really absorb like a, a, a sponge there the top here you have reset your interrupt function that's going to let two people use the machine at one time once the job's begun when I hit interrupt, it's going to finish with the papers that it's got in the theater. Then it's going to come up and tell you interrupt copy is ready. Go ahead and put your next set of originals, tell it what you want to do, and start. Once you've finished interrupting, you want to turn interrupt off and hit start again. That will resume your job. The very top of the machine, as you're running a job, when the last original goes through, you'll get new jobs. So like on the old systems, I want to select new job, go ahead and put the next set of originals in, what I'm doing with that, and start. So it's scanning one while it's printing another. Down at the bottom where you have check status, you can go under current job. That's going to show you where you are in those jobs and approximately how much time it's going to take. On the main screen, you also have a sample copy. If I'm not sure, I can run a sample copy. It's going to one, run one set and ask me if I want to continue or suspend. If I like it, I continue. Suspend takes you back to the main screen so you can change anything. On the panel here, your paper selection, if I have something that's an unusual size, a non-standard size, or any size I don't have loaded, Choose the paper before you lay the item on the glass or put it in the feeder. That way it won't be batch up. If you want to do a quick reduction enlargements, you can do auto reduce and enlarge. That's going to automatically reduce or enlarge your paper. Create margin, we'll keep it centered. So we're just going to place the original. Again, we're choosing the paper, auto reduce and enlarge, and create margin we get from our auto reduce and enlarge. We can also take 11 by 17 and reduce that down. Same situation, we're going to place the original. We're choosing auto reduce and enlarge, choosing the paper size and create margin. So your standard sizes will always be statement to 11 by 17. Anything smaller or larger is not considered your standard. So this is what you get. So it just automatically reduces and enlarges and centers it on the page. Quick and easy. Now any other, if you have really odd sizes, smaller issues, down at the bottom you have reduction and enlargements. You have presets of the common percentages and their conversions. You also have a plus and minus that just takes it at 1% increments. The size magnification lets me tell the machine the size of my image. So I can do a business card. We can take my business card and tell it the machine it's 3.5. We want to make it 11 inches. Now when you're doing things off the glass, we do need to have landscape paper. I'm going to take the paper and put it in the tray in a landscape position. And again, we're just squeezing the guides here and here. It's always a good idea to lock that in place so that when you push it back in, it doesn't move. So now we're just going to choose the landscape paper. We've told it the length that the item we have and the length that we want. Okay, I'm going to place it on the glass. So choose your features before you lay it on the glass. Things on the glass, it's telling me to hit the pound sign or place another original. So we're going to hit the pound sign. Again, the trick on that is to set your features and then lay the item on the glass. 
reset will get you back. Your hole punches are here. You can two hole punch or three hole punch. It's unlimited. Staple positions, you can staple in any of the corners, including a double staple. And your sort and stack is here. The sort is the collated sets. The stack is the same as grouping. So I want three of one original, three of the next original. The stack will do that and offset for you. Stop is the biggest button on the machine. You want to hit it at least two times. Because I can run 10 jobs at once, doesn't know which one I'm stopping. So hit it two times, it will stop that system for you. If it's printing, I can stop it with the stop key, yet it will not clear my job. So when you go into your print jobs to retrieve your printer jobs, you're going to highlight the print jobs. Your name should be here. You're going to select your name, input your code, and then it's going to come up and give you an area to select all. So if you sent multiple jobs. Once you do that, if you realize you need to stop it for any reason, you can hit the stop key and reset will reset that job. So the stop is only stopping it, it does not reset the job for you. If you are going to be going into scanning, on the scan screen you can choose as many destinations as you want. On the side over here are your scan settings. Your scan settings will allow you to scan in color, black and white, or photo, which is half tones. Resolution allows you to change the dots on the page. You can go up to 600. And then scan size. And if I want to scan something small, if I've just got one, put a sheet of paper over it, or I can go to the closest size. It's just asking how far over on the glass it needs to scan to capture that image. And then the new area under editing, we can now do reduction enlargements so we don't have to make copies anymore. Your book erase allows you to scan with the lid up. It deletes the edge as well as down the center. On the side here under original feed type, this is where your two-sided scanning is. So you don't have to make copies. Select two-sided, put your originals in, and start. The book allows you to place a book on the glass. I'm going to line the book anytime I'm doing book mode. I'm going to line the book with the eight and a half mark on the glass here. That's going to scan the left side, which is just letter size, and then scan the right size. Your batch allows you to do a job build. So if some are through the feeder and some are through the glass, I can put my first set of originals and start. Then I can go to the glass, start. When I get the last set in, I'm going to hit the pound sign. That tells the system I'm through. So it's printing while I'm feeding it. Once I hit pound, everything's done from memory. The divide is when I want to scan 200 pages and have it be 200 separate files on the other end. So I can place those in, divide it by however many page I want, and then tell it divide check. OK, and start. When you get back to your computer, you're going to have 200 separate files without having to place one and start, place one and start. The last feature here is send file type and name. You can name the file. If you don't name it, it's going to come across as PDF, the date, time, and serial number. And the types of files that you can do is PDF, JPEG, and TIFF. Home screen, if you are on the home screen, you can select the tabs directly there or from the bottom. Questions? Did I miss anything? On the, the guides here, all of these rollers, you must use the rollers and turn in the way of the arrows. All of them have arrows on them. If you don't, you can get a piece of paper stuck in there. You can also strip a sensor, which shuts the machine completely down. You do have two down here that are squeezes, so you're squeezing, they'll lower down. Again, there are arrows on those areas as well. Very important to always turn in the way of the arrows. Otherwise, you're feeding that paper back into the system and it will jam. Um, if you do leave a sensor or pull a sensor out of whack, your machine is shut down and the tech will have to come out and uh, adjust that.